Welcome home, Discovery Church. Welcome home. I want to say thank you to all of you who are joining us today, those joining us on the rebroadcast, as well as those joining us in our coffee venue. And I know what y'all were thinking. I'm sorry, but Pastor Tim's not up here today, and you got the shorter, darker, with blonde hair version, Mike Baker. I'm so excited to be with you guys today, as well as starting our brand new series, By Faith, By Faith. Faith. We're going to be going through one of my favorite passages of Scripture ever. So if you would, please turn in your Bibles, and if you've got one on your phones, turn there to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to be starting in verse 1. And while you're turning there, i got to ask you one question. What is your own personal definition of faith? What is your own personal definition of faith? So Hebrews 11, verse 1. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in the days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Join me in prayer, please. Father, right now we come to you. I want to say thank you for the opportunity we have to just worship who you are and dive into your word. Father, it is an honor to be able to speak about you, not only that, but to be able to talk to you and learn about you. Father, I pray that you open our eyes to what you would have us see today. Open our hearts to whatever you would want us to take home. Father, I pray that you speak through me and use me as your mouthpiece Father, we love you and we praise you. It's in your name. Amen. Amen. And in, this, in studying that small portion of scripture there, I had to ask myself the exact same question. What is my own personal definition of faith? Mike Baker, what is your definition of faith? How would you describe it? And I did with most what most people would do, probably what some of y'all did today. You Googled it. You went to Google and just typed it in and said whatever. And Google describes and defines faith as assurance. Assurance. And look, I want to, I want to look back in, this, in verse 1 really quickly and just say, look what it says. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. Hope. Assurance means in Greek, foundation. And hope in Greek means confident expectation. So when we have faith, we're assured in someone or something. And we are confident in that someone or something. But then yet, we, we take a look a little closer at those two words here, and there's that combination that the author of Hebrews said there. There's one thing missing I see is the fact that when you have hope in something, and you're confident in it, and you're assured in it, you must have to trust it. Am I correct? You have to trust it. So when we have faith, it means we are confident in that someone or something. We can trust that someone or something, and we have hope. Hope in that someone or some thing. In our context, for us as believers, is the fact that when we believe in the Lord and we have faith in God, our foundation is in Him. Our hope is in Him. Our confidence is in Him. Our trust is in Him. I just want to just look at this table. This is a, a physical like representation of what our faith is. If this is our foundation of what we believe, guess what goes on top of this? Our hope, our trust, our confidence. I love what it says here, is, but the reality of what we hope for, the reality, the real deal, real life. Real life can get really hard really quickly, can't it? Things we can't see happen to us. Things we don't see coming, and the storms come, and it gets cloudy, and our faith quivers, and we don't know where to turn. My friends, today I can say honestly and with passion that by faith in God, our reality remains clear. By faith in God, our reality remains clear. But however, the storm keeps coming. Things build up. Things are pouring into life that we're not ready for. <laughs> And we don't know where to turn. And our faith gets blinded by the distractions of what the world is doing. I like to call these moments of life the unseen. The unseen moments of life. 
Look at the rest of war. Verse 1 says, it is the evidence of things we cannot see. Our faith is the evidence of things we cannot see. These unseen moments in life come so quickly. However, there's more to it. Because sometimes the unseen can be the most difficult to comprehend. Those moments when the storms come can be the most difficult to really and truly understand. But friends, today I want you to just get one thing, and it's that by faith the unseen becomes understandable. By faith the unseen becomes understandable. I was talking to my friend Mario from Starbucks about this, I think, a few weeks ago. And we got in this great conversation about what faith is, what it means to each other. And he just quoted somebody, this man, man named Charles Ryrie. He, Charles Ryrie explains faith as this, seeing something unseen as if it were already in sight. Seeing something unseen as if it were already in sight. I, it took me a few minutes just to process that statement, to process what that actually means. Then I was reminded of a passage of, of passages of Scripture when Jesus says, faith is everything, believe in me. And one that really came to my head came from John chapter 20, verse 29. The pretense behind that verse is Jesus has just been crucified and has been in the grave for three days and has just risen again. He appears in the upper room with the disciples. A little background behind these men. They knew who Jesus was. They walked with him, seen miracles by him. And Jesus told them what was going to happen to him. I'm going to die, but I'm coming back. The son of man will be a sacrifice, but guess what? I'm coming back. And yet when, this, when Jesus appeared in the upper room, disbelief and joy hit them at the exact same time. The exact same time. They couldn't believe this man that just, they just watched die has returned to them. And this man named Thomas, one of the disciples, also nicknamed Doubting Thomas, asked Jesus to prove himself, or you, to prove that you are who you say you are. And Jesus lets him touch the holes in his hand and the piercing in his side. Because I don't know about you guys, I don't want to touch the hole in someone's hand. I'm going to stick my finger through it and explain, okay, you're real. No, I'm good. I don't need that in my life. I promise you I don't. But Thomas wanted him to prove that Jesus who says who he was. And this is what Jesus had said to him. You believe because you have seen me, but blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Even here in this context of where they're at, men who walked with Jesus physically have trouble with faith. And Jesus is clearly just explaining to them the importance of having faith in him. It's so hard to do that because we all become doubting Thomases. We can see the miracles of everything Jesus has done for us, but then when our circumstances hit the ground, the unseen takes over, and we begin to forget, and it makes it so difficult to understand. And Jesus says here, by faith, the unseen becomes understandable. Look at verse 2. Through their faith, the people in the days of old earned a good reputation. Even today, it's hard to keep a good reputation. Run, wrong, move, and it's over. But these men are recognized for their good reputation. The people that God used in this time period, their faith stood out. Everything about them stood out. They were different. They were different. One thing that really impacts me is the fact that their faith not only impacted them, but it impacted those around them. I'm going to be honest, in every story, that we've read and see, those stories of those men are affecting us right now. Their faith still has a good reputation. In Romans chapter 1, verse 17, Paul is writing to the church of Rome. And he's just explaining to them the good news of the gospel, the good news of God himself. And he tells them, this good news tells us how God makes us right 
in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish. By faith, as the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Two key words are in there is the fact that it says, by faith, a righteous person has life. A righteous person has life. That good reputation came from those men's righteous lives because they lived by faith. And that faith did not come from anything of human power, anything from human recognition, anything from human anything. It came from something much larger, so much bigger, so much greater, and so much more powerful than anything mankind could comprehend. By faith in God, our reality remains clear. And by faith, the unseen becomes understandable. I'm just reminded of some of these men that actually lived and had that good reputation. And one of my favorites, his name was Paul, the Apostle Paul was a murderer of Christians, and then by Jesus' name, was flipped around and became the greatest missionary of all time. This man was beaten, spit upon, imprisoned, stoned. And it's by faith and by faith alone, this man stood the test against every circumstance that came across his path. By faith alone, this man walked a good reputation. Another one I, w- I realized was King David. And King David was known by a lot of his mistakes. He killed a man over his wife. And yet his nickname is still a man after God's own heart. By faith and by faith alone, this man was able to stand up and keep moving forward. One of my favorites, his name is Stephen. Stephen. The only thing about Stephen, he was the first Christian martyr. If you don't know what a martyr is, it's a man who dies for the cause. This man died after preaching one sermon. One sermon. He was killed by the people he was preaching to. The Bible tells us they yelled, snarled, angry, aggressive towards him for speaking the words of God. And Stephen did not see Jesus until the moment of his death. And even through all of this, he was getting stoned. And his first reaction was not hatred or anger. His first reaction was to beg God to forgive them. By faith and faith alone, this man stood a test and was able to forgive beyond measure. The unseen circumstances that these men went through impacted their lives. It changed them, molded who they were, and gave them that good reputation and it gives us a chance to make our own. I think back of when I went through an unseen moment of my life, it was last um, J- July. I had just decided to stay down here and work with Discovery Church, and a week later, I get into a car accident. And Pastor Tim, Pastor Mike, and Pastor Zach, all of them could see in my, my heart and in my face, there were frustration, the anger, the bitterness, was building up so much in like three, four months. They all noticed it. And then in November, I would begin to finance my boss's car. A nice Dodge Durango, an old one. That's a nice good beater, just to last me a little while. But I wouldn't understand why I would have to get this car. The unseen circumstances of my life would still be there until two weeks later, a family of five would join Discovery And they didn't have a car, didn't have a means to get anywhere, needed assistance, and they lived three minutes away from me. And my vehicle sits six people exactly, including myself. I don't understand, like, how in the world that God knew exactly when I needed that. And it's by faith in him and by faith the men around me really stirred me in the right direction. By faith, the unseen became understandable in my heart because now I get to see them and minister to them every time I get the chance. And it has been a blessing for four to five months of that. I'm not saying that it's going to happen that fast for everybody, 
But however, I am saying, if you want to understand what's going on, look up. Look to him. Look to the only person where your foundation can actually stand. In Matthew, it tells us the fact that Jesus explains, build your house on my teachings on the brimstone, on the rock, not on the sand. Guys, where's your house built right now? Where's your house built right now? Are the storms knocking you over? You don't understand why? Look up, because by faith, the unseen becomes understandable. Look at verse 3. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Just notice the first four words here. By faith, we understand. By faith, we understand. If you want to be able to understand what's going on, you have to have faith in something greater than yourself. By faith in God, our reality remains clear. And in those moments of clarity, by faith, the unseen becomes understandable. And one of my favorite parts of this scripture is next few words and it states by faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command that blows me away our God created the entire universe in Psalm 33 verse 6 it says the Lord merely spoke and the heavens were created he breathed and the stars were born at the God that we serve The God that we serve, his words create universes and his breath creates the stars. A lot of times the storms that come to us are from the people we know close. that ask us questions, we don't know how to answer them. How can you believe in something that you can't see? They'll ask. Say, look around you. Our God created, my God created the grass you're standing on, the sun that's heating your day, the cool nights, the moon, the stars. Look around you. I want you to turn to your neighbor right now and say this word, aeonis. Aeonis. Aeonis in Greek this literally just means it's time, space, everything, universe. In this Aeonis moment, everything changed for us. What I'm saying by that is the fact that our faith didn't start on the cross when Jesus was crucified, taking all of our sins away. No. Our faith started in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created. In that moment, our story of our faith was being written in that exact moment. On the cross, And when Jesus died, our faith was being continually written in that moment. And today, my friends, my family, right now, June 19th, June 19th, June 9th, 2019, our story of our faith is continually being written. Right now. My friends, I got one question for you right now. Where does your faith stand? Where does your faith stand? Are you stuck in the clouds? Are you stuck in the mist? Are you stuck in the storm? You don't know where to go. You're running around in circles trying to find your own way. Just look up. By faith, the unseen becomes understandable. And it's by faith we need to live. We need to live. If you want to grow in your faith, guess what you got to do? You got to spend time with the person who created it in the first place. Spend time with his word. Spend time talking to him. Spend time just getting to know him. You will grow in your faith. And when the storms come, you may feel it, but you know what to do. The unseen moments of your life will begin to crumble because you understand that something bigger is around you already and supporting you and created you. Because by faith, that unseen moments of your life will begin to become understandable. Where does your faith stand today? 
Do not leave this building the same way you came in. Do not leave, just log off the rebroadcast without answering this question. Where does your faith stand today? And what will you do tomorrow? Let's pray. Father, right now, I want to say thank you for this opportunity we have to just understand who you are. You're a loving God. You created everything and you're chasing us. Father, it is a blessing to be able to get to know you, to be able to just get the opportunity to love you. Father, by faith, the unseen becomes understandable by and through you. Father, let us know that deep within our hearts today. Let us begin to change ourselves to what you would have us change. Father, do not let us leave here with the understanding that you're there in the midst of our storms of our lives, that you're standing there, turning us to you, to everything you are. Father, it is a blessing to have you on our side. And thank you for everything that you do and continue to do through and with us. Father, we love you and we praise you. And it's in your